Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial on the basic audio signal path. First of all, I thought we would start with a question and ask what is sound or how do we perceive sound? In the case of music, sound is created by a variety of instruments. Uh, you can think of a, a variety of string instruments, violin, viola, cello, bass, woodwind instruments, brass, and percussion, as well as contemporary uh, rhythm section instruments like a drum kit, bass, guitars, that type of thing. So how do these instruments actually create sound? The best analogy I think to use is dropping a rock or other type of device with some mass into a pool of still water. If you drop something into a pool of still water, it naturally creates waves, okay? And these waves may look something like this. So those waves are created and the, each wave has different energy. Obviously, the top of the waves are stronger than the bottom of the waves. Okay, they each create energy. Now, when we create a sound, we're doing the exact same thing, except our medium isn't water, our medium is air. Okay, so a musical instrument or a voice uh, in some way is moving or disrupting the air and creating a wave. Okay, so let's talk about how a musical instrument actually creates the sound. Okay, what happens in every case is that part of the instrument is displacing the air around it. Let's take, for example, uh, a snare drum. If we take a snare drum and hit it with a stick, okay, it's going to displace the drum head. Okay, so here's a snare drum right so if I hit this with a stick and you look horizontally at this you probably can't see it very well but um, if I hit this with a stick you can see that my finger is just depressing that head if I hit it with a stick it's causing that drum to vibrate okay now when an object vibrates another term that we often will use for that is that something is oscillating okay so each instrument then creates a form of oscillation in the case of a snare drum we hit the snare drum head and it causes it to oscillate back and forth like this until eventually it returns to being uh, silent or stationary okay just like when we drop the rock into the pool of water same kind of thing happens. We drop the rock, it creates waves, and eventually they dissipate. Okay, now how about something like a violin? How does a violin create sound? Well, the same basic principle. If you pluck a violin string, you are displacing it. And so that string is going to move left to right like this until finally it stops its motion. And all the time that it's moving, it is displacing the air around it and creating air waves or sound waves. Now, every instrument essentially does the same thing. Um, a brass instrument, we are using the vibration of somebody's lips to disrupt the air wave and amplifying that through a horn, or trumpet, trombone, tuba, whatever the case may be. Same with a woodwind instrument. The reed is vibrating in the performer's mouth and that is interrupting the air wave or the air stream that's coming out of the performer's mouth. And as he does that, it's creating a sound wave because he's interrupting the airflow. Same with my voice right now as I'm speaking to you. My vocal cords or vocal folds are flapping together like this. You're like, yeah, they're really flapping. Okay, they're, they're flapping together like this. Well, when they're flapped together like that, it's disrupting the air coming out of my lungs and creating air waves or sound waves. Okay, and the way that you hear those 
is that you have an ear. That's not much of an ear. And inside of your ear, you have an eardrum. And an eardrum has essentially a drum head on it that receives those airwave or sound wave variations and turns that energy into mechanical motion. And that mechanical motion is tied to some bones in your ears, which winds up moving a column of liquid inside your ear. And there are little hairs that stick down called cilia. And those hairs move, and they're tied to nerves. And so those nerve signals then get sent to your brain, and we perceive that as sound. So essentially, our ear is a converter, and we convert acoustical energy or sound waves or airwave energy into electrical energy that our brains can receive and perceive as sound. Okay, so now let's discuss how we may capture for the purposes of recording or reinforcing the sound if we were like doing a live performance, capturing the audio in such a way that we can either store it or reproduce it. Okay, so what's the best way to capture it? Well, most instruments we capture with a microphone. And this is my diagram of a microphone. Okay, now what's interesting about a microphone is that, first of all, it is called a transducer. And you'll say, what is a transducer? Basically, a transducer converts uh, one type of energy to another. So in the case of music, we're converting sound waves to electrical waves. Well, how does a microphone do this? Basically, the same way that our ear does it. Okay, remember, our ear has a membrane in there called an eardrum, that when the sound waves hit it, it moves back and forth. It moves, it moves back and forth. So it is essentially converting changes in air pressure or sound waves into mechanical energy, okay, that eventually gets transmitted or converted into electrical energy. A microphone, amazingly enough, does the same thing. It converts acoustical energy or sound waves into electrical energy. And it does this the same way our ear does. So right in here is a small diaphragm that receives these sound waves coming into the microphone and vibrates or oscillates. Now it's tied to a small, basically we'll say it's called a, a small metallic piece of metal that then moves that's inside a group of magnets. So when that piece of metal moves inside that group of magnets, it creates electrical energy. So that is essentially what a microphone does. It transduces the energy from acoustical or sound waves into mechanical, into electrical signals through those essentially magnets inside of the microphone. Okay, that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll continue our discussion of the basic audio signal path by discussing various microphone types, and then we'll move on to other elements.